everybody! Welcome to another creative tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over the last four tools in the toolbar over here. I'm really excited because we made it through this whole thing here, even with Creative, Creative's uh, 4.0 update, now at 4.1. And they improved on a couple of things, which I'll be going over right now. The first and most importantly, is the text tool. The last version of Krita had text, but it was buggy, it wasn't easy to use, and I really did not like it. It crashed on me. Uh, at, at work, I still have Krita 3.2. Uh, we haven't gotten, or I haven't really gotten around to updating it yet, and it it's just, it's bad. <laughs> it's just really bad. Uh, so they decided to improve that which is amazing. So with that selected, I'm going to click and drag for just an area for the text to be in. It automatically resizes based on the content in the rich text box. And as you can see, this is one big window just for the text. I don't think that the previous version of Krita had this. It was all in the tool options, which you can't get to when you have this window open because everything's in the window. And I like that. I really do. I like this a lot better. It's easier to read. You have more room to type stuff. You don't have to rely on editing directly on the canvas. It's very clean. It's just nice and organized now. So to change the text, we have to either Control A to highlight everything or click and drag. And we can just hit Backspace or Delete. I'm just going to type cats are awesome because I have a kitten. No, no but kittens are awesome. Because my kitten is awesome. She's adorable. So as you can see, I've typed that out, but nothing's changing on my canvas yet. And that's because we haven't saved it. So once I hit save, it's automatically resized the text box for me. And it updates to the words I have typed. And that's awesome. Only I don't like that font. So make sure to highlight that text again. Either Control A or click and drag. And click this drop down menu and you have a bunch of fonts you can choose from. Now forewarning, all the fonts that you're seeing on my screen you may not have because I went out like a crazy person and bought one of those packs of like thousands of fonts. Because that's just, that's just what I do. I just had to. Because I got tired of all these default Windows fonts. Because you know what? You can only use, what is it, Harrington? You can only use that font so many times before you get tired of seeing it. And Papyrus? You know how many times I've seen that font now? It's just no more. So now I have other fonts I can pick from. So, let's do Dipsy Bold Italic, whatever. Now you can see that it's changed my font in the rich text panel here automatically, but it's not updated on my canvas. It's kind of like a preview, which is cool. Except I need that to be bigger because I can't really see that. So now I'm going to go to this number 8 here and click the drop down menu and I'm going to change it to size 28. Now I can read that much better, but I want to change this color. So because the background of this box is a dark gray, even though the color is showing black, it's just going to preview as a white, just to make it easier to see. But what you see on the canvas here, again I'm motioning to the screen with my hands and you can't see it. So here on the screen it's black. That's the color it's going to be and that's what this color is going to be controlling. I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to pick a color. No, let's just do that purple because I love purple. That's just what we're going to pick. You can pick something else. I don't care. So you can see it has actually updated here on my screen. In the preview, in this little preview box. But not here yet. So I'm going to go and hit save. And it has changed on my canvas. That is too light for me to really properly see, so we're going to make that darker. Cool. I should highlight that to actually change it. Oh, sorry. If you click outside the box when you're, to do something else, it, uh, it won't let you until you close this box. So let's try it. And these, you know, I don't know if it's going to let me because these are vector colors. No, it is going to let me. Okay. Yeah, it did. Okay, cool save oh my god one of these days I'll be able to pick a color that is not gonna look disgusting on these videos you know what let's just do that let's just do 
a nice pre-made color. I don't have to sit here doing it. There. Now you can see it. I can see it. It's not an ugly color. It's not blinding anybody. It's not hard to read. Great. So now we can highlight this again. We can make it bold if the font allows it. I can underline it for sure. Because I have a special font, the bold and the italic features aren't going to apply, especially since the font is defaulted to a bold and italic. So that this isn't going to do anything for me. However, if you don't want this to just be underlined, bolded, or italicized, you can go to the format option here and choose some other stuff. Align left, center, and right, which is also here. And you can do, um, you can do, change the weight of it, which is bold or black or whatever. Black is usually like really thick. It's like an extra thick bold. And light is just a thinner font. I don't think this, yeah, this font doesn't have those options available anyway, so it's not going to do anything. But like Arial or Helvetica or whatever you have, that could be affected. Get underline as well, and I can do strike through. I can do wrong thing. The superscript. I can do the subscript, or I can take it off by clicking on it again. Like right, that. I'm gonna do strike through. So for format, click once, highlight, and click once to affect it and click a second time to take that feature off. Alright, the insert box is supposed to give you another pop-up box, but it's not I'm not seeing it on my screen, so I'm wondering if that could be a bug. I'll have to look into that, but it should give you a box to insert special characters that are hard to get. Um, kind of like the alt codes, like if I hit alt, um, I don't know, type in some random numbers and I got a symbol. Actually, like that. So all code, alt codes do work for this if you can't get that insert menu to show up. Uh, let, me, let me see, alt shift c is supposed to be the shortcut. No, that doesn't work. Um, I wonder if this is... Yeah, it's just not going to show up. The SVG source, you can go ahead and fine-tune the text on your screen with some uh, code here. Uh, to me, that is pretty much the same as um, HTML or CSS cascading style sheet code for web design. If you're familiar with that, this you know might be right up your alley, so you can fine tune all of that. If not, don't worry about it. You probably won't be needing that. All right in settings, you can change the settings of this box here. So if you don't want the SVG source to show up, you can only have the rich text show up. You can change the colors of some of the tools, uh, the text color and the uh, editor background color. I'm going to leave everything as it is. I don't have any problems with it at this time. And fonts, you can change the type of system that uh, you can use. These are like specialized characters. Obviously they're, they're more, um, not calligraphic, but I, I want to say more symbol based, but they're not. They're just a different type of um, writing, obviously. Um, I don't need that, so I'm not going to touch it. Alright, so I'm going to leave that as it is, and I just reset my font. Oh, oh okay. So if you, have, if you reset the font thing, then you highlight and the font will come back up. Phew, I thought I lost it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to save, make sure everything's the same there. Edit, uh, it's pretty much everything that you're doing anyway, but if you have multiple uh, sentences and you want to say, oh, if I, I put this name down, I want to replace it with something else, you can do find and replace and all that cool stuff. Kind of like your basic editing tools and Word and all that. And you can view, um, zoom in and out. So that's pretty much it for the text editor box. Um, definitely play with it, get used to it. It's so much nicer than what it was before. If you've never experienced what it was before Creative 4.0, don't try and experience it because it'll just leave you frustrated. So make sure everything I did was saved again, and I'm going to close it by hitting that X button. Button? Button? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm a little tired from work, so I'm a little out there. Sorry. Alright, so if I click on this cursor here, I can move that text box around instead of hitting Control T and then moving it or using this. You can see, like this, it's just so weird. This tool is just 
Like, it works fine, it's much faster, but it's still laggy compared to this. So just use that cursor for the text. You can see in your layers that the, the text is a vector layer. That means if I go to my paintbrush tool, I can't paint on this. This is not a paint layer. And the nice thing about it being a vector layer is it'll remain crisp to a point. Right now, you know, I'm zooming in really close, so it's getting a little fuzzy, but the edges, if this... Uh, text was large enough would be really really nice and crisp. The cursor tool is the shape selection tool and that's used to make or change shapes here. Right now I have a black cube that doesn't look like fun. So as you can see I have all these little submenus in my tool options to change this. Now this is kind of like with a transform tool where you can uh, make changes to the sh overall shape and size based on like the changed pivot point. So everything um, from this red box is what's going to affect the shape and size, with this corner being unaffected. So it's kind of basing its everything around that corner. I'm going to go ahead and reset that so that red box is back in the middle. Let's make this a little bit more square. I can change the opacity of my square. And that's actually kind of neat. That way you don't have to go up to your layers and make the change here. Like, oh, I just need to pass it there. I'm just going to change everything. And you don't have to. Just change the uh, opacity of that shape. Only that shape, no matter what layer it's on. The line tool, or the stroke, which is basically the outline of this. I don't have an outline. Uh, nope, there it goes. I, here we go. I do have it. I was able to add it back in. Cool. I couldn't see it before when I was testing this, and that was because it was obviously too thin to see. Or I probably had the wrong color, which, if you've watched my videos, I have a habit of doing. Alright, so I'm making this outline thicker. You can kind of see it's got almost a nice little beveled edge here. Not because that's what I'm doing, but that's because it's overlapping that gray area, which is already a low opacity. So if I turn that back up, it's going to be a nice solid line. Turn this down, it's going to be a little see-through, which is a neat effect. So I'm just going to leave it like that because I can. In the line style, I can change that to a dash. I can change, I should be able to change individuals. I don't think I can with what I'm doing. So the corner, uh, if you use Krita, if you use Krita, you use Illustrator, basically this is going to change the look of the edges when uh, there's a sharp corner or something of that uh, outline. You can have it rounded, you can have it kind of like a squared off, you can have it just square, you can have it as it is. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. I'm clicking, I'm not really seeing how it's looking in the screen. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Now I'm looking, I can change that. Kind of, oops. You can see here, let me zoom in so you can see it better. You can see that it's kind of taken away part of that corner. I'm going to click on that again. I'm just going to leave it, we'll leave it square. That's fine. Okay. And if you want to make a gradient out of this, I can do that as well, but I don't, oops, I don't, I don't want to, so I won't make it solid. Alright, so for the gradient here, close that, it'll default to the X here. I can do another fill color. Oh my gosh, I, I picked a color for the first time. It doesn't look bad. It actually looks kind of nice. We'll do a gradient to spice things up though. Alright, so this is the gradient. And this is a little different than the gradients we had made before. We're using, um, uh-oh. I think I'm crashing Krita. So I crashed Krita, but Krita is amazing. I was able to uh, recover my file. So let's kind of continue where we left off at. So we can go ahead and change the fill on this to a gradient if we wanted to. So just by clicking that box, it's automatically a gradient. Don't have to worry about changing gra uh, the gradients up here. So let's do a pink. Okay, so now that first color here is going to be the pink, and it's going to be transparent. 
and I can move that. So it kind of gives me a really nice fade, really great controls. And I can take that opacity and I can darken it, or I can darken the opacity. I can make it 100% opaque, or I can take that down. And that's going to affect this right here. So by bringing that opacity to a value of 1 or 100%, it's changing this from transparent to black. And because this is already uh, at an opacity of like 55%, it's not going to show the black until I put it back up to 1. Just keep that in mind. And then if you want to add more points to change colors on, just click and drag to where you want that point to go. You can see it's automatically changing the look of the gradient in real time. I don't have to wait for anything to update. I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to change this to... Oh my god, I'm going to pick a horrible color. I'm so sorry. Let's just do the purple. Let's just... Do the purple. Okay, that's, that's what this is going to be. Drag that in. Heck. That was weird. Okay, so I had to right click to do that for some reason. Drag that off, get rid of it. Alright, so now I have that nice purple. It's still looking okay. It's not blinding. That's great. And this is going from the pink to the purple to transparent. So it's got a nice little gradient effect. Gradient effect. And I just got rid of the pink. And I got rid of the purple. Great. So let's drag that away. Click there. Make that purple again. Cool. And this is really, you know, it's really nice. It's easy to control. You can see everything right there. Don't have to worry about that gradient up there either. So it's nice. Just very nice. And that's pretty much it for the uh, shape selection tool. So now we have this beautiful gradient here. We have this other feature. This one is called the shape edit shapes tool. I'm going to call it the selector again. So by clicking that, the shape we made, this cube, has a point. If I click and drag, it's rounding out those edges until it turns into a sphere. Now this is a really cool thing by itself. But we want to take that a step further. We want to have more control over the shape. So instead of editing just the corner radius, I'm going to say convert to path. And now, after rounding out those corners, I have a, a point here to edit that shape. I can move it around. I'm making a speech bubble without even thinking about it. That's cool. Not a very good speech bubble. But you get the idea. So I can move each individual point to make a new shape, very similar to Inkscape or, or uh, Illustrator, with the vector shapes and all that crazy stuff. And you even have some of those tools here in your tool options. So right now I have, I haven't touched anything else. I undid what I, I moved. I'm going to click on this point. I'm going to click. I'm going to click on that point, and I'm going to press this one first. I've deleted it. Undo. If I want to add a point, what I can do is I can should be able to click uh, yeah click on the in between two uh, points. Not sure why it's not showing up there, but I can click here. I can add a point. Should be able to click here. I'm not sure why. Interesting. Could be because I changed the shape, so maybe it didn't add it properly because it is here. So I'll just add a point there. Let's see if we can add a point. Nope. So I'm able to add points here. And now I can go back and click on them, and I can change the type of curve that they're going to have. So I can make this curved, which it already is. I can straighten it out. Let me actually try and show you here. Click on that. Make it, there we go. Straight in the corner, not just the one side. So it's a sharp point. Oh, it's not a nice rounded edge. But I can click on this. I'm sorry, click on this, and it'll give me a nice curve again. And same with that one. You can click and drag and select multiple if you'd like. So now that's kind of got a nice curve. Looks a little weird, but that's what it is. Now curve, and I can kind of sharpen that up a bit. Whoops. And as you can see, as I'm making these changes, my um, 
when you call it a gradient, is being affected as well. It's moving with the change, so it's retaining that value, which is really nice. And uh, the last tool we have to go over, I'll undo that. Go ahead and play with the other um, options for this as well. I personally don't use the shapes very often, or ever, rather, not like this. But if you want to play with it, maybe you just need a quick speech bubble for your comic, you can go ahead and make your own, or whatever else you need. So I'm going to move this up here, and move on to the calligraphy tool. By default, uh, it's going to have tablet pressure unchecked, and it's going to say current. We want to make sure it's got the graphics pen, and we're using the tablet pressure. As you can see, because I have that purple color, uh, that's going to show up in my stroke. Because it's a calligraphy tool, it's going to act like those ink pens, those really nice old-fashioned ones for calligraphy. So it looks almost like a ribbon with each stroke that I make. Now I can change that, so I can have my thinning, so the less pressure I put on my tablet pen, the thinner that line is going to get. Like over here, it's almost non-existent. And here is the thickest point, which is the width. And I can actually bring that down, we'll just bring that down to 20. I'm just going to make a new vector layer. And now my thickest point is still pretty thin. It's no longer, actually, I can probably push it up to 60 so you can see the difference. Let's get out of that. And the tablet angle, I can bring this drag to zero and it's going to be all over the place. Oh my god, that looks crazy. You know, it's kind of a, uh, what brush was it? A dynamic brush? I think we went over that had the same feature or something similar. That's this is like you took that urban dancing and you just went crazy with it. That's what that looks like. Make that darker. Yep, that's what that looks like. It's pretty cool. And then you can take the drag and put it back up to one, which is the maximum that you can do, and you're gonna get nicer refined um, strokes and curves and stuff with that. Caps, we put that to one. Gives a little bit of it. Doesn't seem to be changing that much. Let me try it again. I'm sure there's a combination of settings you have to do with that. It seems that the caps uh, was able to give me more of the edge here than this. You see how. Maybe not. Yeah, if I try and follow along that, I'm not getting the same. But yeah. There we go. I'm able to control that thinner curve better. Yeah, you can play with it. See what you can come up with. Put that back down to zero. You know, mess with the settings. That's pretty much it with the calligraphy, calligraphy pen. If you do a mouse, it's just going to treat it like you're using a mouse. So it's going to have a consistent stroke to it. Um, you can still change all the, the stuff. But if you check this back on, it's just going to go back to the tablet settings. And that's it for the final four tools of Krita in the, to in the Krita toolbar. I'm definitely going to be doing more videos. I mean, this isn't the end. Not even close. There's still a lot of cool features that uh, Krita has um, in regards to their program that I haven't touched on, or I've touched on a little bit, but I haven't really gone too much in depth with it. So I will still be making videos on that. I will still be continuing my workflow tips and my uh, speed, not my speed paint, but my time lapse art videos, and Maybe some other stuff I have in mind. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it yet. I'm on the fence. Don't want to share the idea yet. But we'll see. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions or other comments or you want to make a suggestion of the type of video for me to do, also let me know in the comments below. If you aren't already, subscribe, like this video, or share it so someone else who is new to the program can learn something. 
And if you'd like to support me in other ways, you can donate to my coffee, or you can support me on my Patreon. Or just subscribe. That's fine too. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.